Now onto the continuation, let's apply these textures that we have created from the previous part of this tutorial. Let's start off with the dark gray paint on the walls. Now going back to our dialax file, let's go to the texture tab and select create texture material to import the dark gray paint texture. Now let's apply this texture by simply dragging it onto the surface of the walls or any wall objects that we have created. Okay, I made a mistake on this part of the wall. I forgot to apply different color texture on the door and the door frame, but don't worry, we could still apply different texture onto those objects. Now let's import the light gray paint for the ceiling, the doors, and the baseboards. Select create texture material and import the light gray paint. And then just drag the texture onto the surfaces. Now let's go back to this side of the wall. Let's apply light gray paint onto the door and the door frame. Now if you want to apply different texture on a certain surface of an object, Hold shift on your keyboard and drag the texture on a certain surface. Release the shift if you want to go to other camera view. Then hold shift and apply the texture onto that surfaces. Now just do this method onto the rest of the textures. Let's import the niche texture. Hold shift onto your keyboard and then drag the texture onto that part of the niche. Now let's resize this texture. Now let's select this surface and resize it according to the exact size of that surface. Now let's import the other niche texture. Hold shift onto your keyboard. Now click the surface again and let's resize it according to the exact size of that surface. Now let's apply these textures onto the other niche. Let's select pick material to copy the texture properties of this surface and then hold shift onto your keyboard and drag the texture onto the other surface. Now just do this method onto the other niche texture. Now let's apply white texture onto the inner part using the shift method. Now let's apply the other textures. Let's resize this. As for the mirror texture, let's go to the Create Color Material on the Texture tab and then adjust the red, green, and blue to the maximum because these are the properties of a white color. And then select Metallic and then adjust the Reflective Coating to the maximum for a maximum reflection and then drag that texture, hold shift. Now we are done applying textures onto the basic elements of this room. The next step of this tutorial is that we are going to import the 3DS furnitures that we need for our dialax file. And it's a tricky process that you need to understand because sometimes 
Dialex Evo is having a problem to read all the surfaces of a 3DS furniture that has too many surfaces or too many overlapping surfaces. And I already made a tutorial about this one on how to fix a buggy furniture, so feel free to check this video. Now going back to our Dialex file, let's import first the bed furniture. And this is the 3DS furniture that I got from the 3D Warehouse SketchUp. And I've already exported this as 3DS file. Now, if you have noticed that the file size of this furniture is 1.87 MB, that means that this furniture is a heavy file size furniture and it's going to have too many surfaces. Now, what I normally do instead of directly importing all these 3DS furniture on the Dialax Evo, I normally import this furniture first on the Dialax 4.13 so that the surfaces will be solidified. Now let's import the bed furniture. And then uncheck merge all selected meshes layers to one object because we are not going to export this as a whole furniture. Click next and the unit size of the file is meters. Next, next, and next. Now what we're going to do is that we are going to export this furniture as M3D file and we are not going to export it as a whole furniture because as I said a while ago, this is a heavy file furniture so it has too many overlapping surfaces and chances are that this furniture will get buggy once you do the lighting calculation. Now let's combine these objects per part of the bed. Now let's export this furniture part by part or group by group. But before that, you will notice that the base point of these objects are on the same position. That means that once you import these objects onto the Dialax Evo, just move it onto the same X and Y location so that the objects will automatically snap onto the exact same position as this one. Now let's export these objects part by part. Let's start off with the bed footing. Click the object and go to the file tab and select export and then select save object. And then let's rename this as bed footing. Now just do this method onto the rest of the parts. Now let's go back to our Dialax file. Let's import these objects. Go to the file tab and select import and then select furniture file. And let's start importing the bed footing. Now let's move this object onto the two meters on the X position and then two meters on the Y position and just use the same coordinate onto the other objects. Now let's import the other objects. Now let's import the bed base and just move it on to 2 meters on the X axis and then 2 meters on the Y axis so that the object will automatically snap on all to the exact position. And just do the same method onto the rest of the objects.
Now, after exporting these objects, let's group all these objects. Let's go to the plan view and then select all the objects. Now, go to the copy and arrange tab and select group. Now, let's go to our plan and right click onto the object and then rotate. And then let's move it on to the exact position. Now let's go to the perspective view and let's check. Now we are done on the bed furniture. Let's add a bench furniture on to the end side of the bed. As for the bench, the file size of the 3DS furniture is 155 kilobytes. That means that the furniture is not heavy. You can import this as a whole furniture. You don't need to import this part by part in the Dialax Evo. But always make it a habit to import first the 3DS furniture on the Dialax 4.13 so that the surfaces will be solidified. Now let's import the bench furniture. You don't need to uncheck the merge objects because we are going to import this in the Dialax Evo as a whole furniture. Click next and then meters. Next, next, finish. Now let's export this as M3D file. Now let's import that bench furniture into our Dialax Evo file. Now let's move that object inside the room, probably 2 meters at the x-axis, then 2 meters on the y-axis. And then let's move it on to the exact position. And now let's import the chair furniture. As far as the chair, if you have noticed that the file size of the 3DS file is 1.81 MB, meaning it's a heavy file, let's import this part by part, just like what we did on the bed furniture. Now let's try to import it on the Dialax 4.13. Uncheck Merge Objects and then click Next. It's done in meters. Next, Next, and Finish. Now let's combine these objects part by part. Let's start off with the chair foot. Right click, Combine. And then let's combine the objects on the upper part. Now let's export this as M3D file. And then let's rename it as chair upper part. Now let's export the chair foot. And then let's rename it as chair foot. Now let's import these objects onto our Dialax Evo file. Let's move it probably 2 meters on the X and then 2 meters on the Y axis. Okay, let's just move it a bit. And then let's import the upper part. Let's check the base point 2 and then 3.5. Let's move it 3.5 on the Y axis. Now let's group these objects. And then let's rotate this according to the orientation on the plan. And let's move it on to the exact position. Now let's go to the perspective view and let's check. Okay, I think we are good with these furnitures. Now just do these methods onto the other furniture. After importing this furniture, just apply textures onto this. It's up to you what type of textures or the color of textures that you want to apply. This is pretty subjective. Just make sure that these textures will complement with the overall design of the room. Just a quick info on the furniture that I've added onto this room. 
On the seating area, I've added a coffee table and a floor lamp furniture. And then I just inserted a luminar plug-in on the floor lamp. I've added two plants in between the TV, a low cabinet on the TV area, and then display furniture on the low cabinet and on the display shelves just to make this room more realistic looking. And then a floor to ceiling height cabinets and then a painting onto this wall and another display furniture on the niche. Just a quick tip, if you are going to import 3DS furniture that has more than 500 kilobytes, don't waste your time importing this furniture as a whole furniture. Do the method that we did on the bed furniture, import them part by part, because if you are going to import this furniture as a whole furniture, chances are that this furniture will get buggy once you do the calculation. Going back to our Dialax file, I don't think that I still need to do a tutorial on how to import luminers. I'm assuming that you guys already know how to import this. Now, as for the lighting concept, I've added two downlights on the entrance area with a 60 degree beam, linear LEDs on the front side of the display shelves, two wall lights in between the TV, and then a luminar plug-in with a 36 degree beam on the floor lamp and then a spotlight towards the painting with a 24 degree beam and then another 24 degree beam on top of the bench seating and then another linear LED strips onto the niche another linear LED strips onto the cove and of course two narrow beam down lights on the bedside area for the reading lights now, before I make a conclusion onto this tutorial, I'm going to share with you the 3DS file of the bed, the bench, and the chair so that you can practice the methods that we did a while ago. And then I'm going to share with you the M3D file of these cabinets because I cannot share with you the 3DS file of these cabinets because I made some reiteration of these 3DS files. And then, as for the plants and the display furniture, just try to find furniture on the 3D Warehouse SketchUp and just play around with this furniture and the textures and do all the methods that you have learned from this tutorial. Now, to conclude this tutorial, in order for you to create a more realistic looking lighting simulation, first step. You need to recreate the room or the project in detail as much as possible. It may take patience at first, but as long as you keep practicing doing this in detail, you will always find ways on how to recreate this on a faster pace. Now, second, use textures that are seamless or create textures that are seamless to avoid the tile effect once you apply these textures onto the objects. Third, you need to use 3DS furniture that are realistic looking as much as possible and do the methods that you have learned from this tutorial. Now, lastly and most importantly, create a lighting concept that is soothingly appropriate for a certain type of project or soothingly appropriate for the activities of the end users. So that's it guys, I'm Architect Jaja Madatu, your Dialax Masterclass Instructor. I hope that you have learned a lot from this video and I'll see you on to the next tutorial. So, if you want to learn, master, and create reality with your lighting simulations, you can watch our series of video tutorials onto our Patreon accounts. Links are written on the description below. You can follow our social media accounts. Feel free to subscribe and click that notification bell to get real-time updates on the upcoming episodes of our Xylax Masterclass. I'll see you.